So the Georgia election interference probe into Trump's legal challenge of the 2020 election results appears to have been completely tainted from the get-go. Emily Coors, the juror forewoman, person in charge of this special grand jury, as bizarre as it is, made her media rounds comprising the integrity of the basically the entire grand jury. Here she is laughing about it. So we're talking about more than a dozen people? I would say that, yes. I think if you look at the page numbers of the report, there's about six pages in the middle that got cut out. Allow for spacing. It's not a short list. Not a short list. <laughs> I wanted to hear from the former president, but honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. Mm. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? I thought it'd be really cool. And yeah, geez, this is, makes me lose faith. It's also important to note that she fancies herself like a bit of a witch. Um, so it, you know, CNN and MSNBC hate Donald Trump so yes. much. They're willing to compromise the investigation to have a story, I right. guess. It's like a personal vendetta. Unbelievable. Well, here to discuss is 2024 campaign attorney and attorney for advisor and attorney and advisor for Donald Trump for president, Christina Bob. Christina, I'm sure you're just saying thank you. Yeah. I mean, this is what has become of our criminal justice system under Joe Biden and Democrat rule. It's absolutely absurd. Last I checked, we still had constitutional rights, like the right to confront your accused, the right to counsel, the right to uh, see the evidence presented against you. All of that is supposed to apply in any criminal case. It does not apply in a grand jury because they're allowed to, the, the prosecution is allowed to present evidence. There's no counsel present. Uh, the defendants don't even know what's being presented against them. It's supposed to be very, very secret, very sealed to make sure that it doesn't taint anything going forward. Well, that's out the window. So you see that Georgia has completely uh, tainted the jury pool because now you have an entire jury pool of people who believe that there's some crime that President Trump has committed or, or his allies have committed, but nobody knows what it is. And so they're trying to get ahead of the game here and try to taint the jury pool, try to lead the public to believe that there's a crime here uh, without providing them an opportunity to defend themselves. Right. Uh, do you think that Cora's candid interviews could have an impact on potential charges? Uh, yes, it should. It should mean that there should be no charges. The jury pool has been tainted. Any defendant, I don't know I don't know who they're going to try to indict, but any of them, whether it's President Trump or any of his allies, all of them have had their constitutional rights violated by this media tour, by uh, the district attorney allowing this craziness to happen. And it's not just the fact that she went to the media. It's what she said. She said that the district attorney threw a party for the grand jury and she was eating a, po a ninja popsicle while swearing in uh, defendants. Wait, why, would, why were they throwing a party? Did they try to taint the jury by getting them to like the prosecutors? I mean, what she actually said is, is a very serious problem, and I don't think that any indictment should be able to stand. Christine, I just want, like, I, I want to zoom out here for a second because okay. the thing that gets me on this is, you know, when you put somebody under oath, when you depose them, it's because you believe there to be something. Not like, I think it'd be really cool to right. depose the former president and look him in the... No, that's... It, are you doing this for self, you know, gratification? Not you personally, her. Is Coors yeah. doing this for self-gratification? Or is she doing it because they actually want to get to the bottom of something? Yeah, well, she's doing it for herself. The same reason she's doing the media and everything. All of this is politically motivated. And to your point, I think it's very interesting that we're seeing the news talk about this grand jury foreman and not an actual crime. Now, just for example, if we contrast this to, say, Alec Baldwin, he fired a gun, someone died. You had panels of legal experts saying, is it going to be first-degree murder, second-degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter? They were talking about potential crimes that could fit this set of facts. We're not seeing that with Donald Trump because nobody can figure out what crime was committed here. The phone call has been public for years. Anything that could potentially come up in this has been public for years. And no panel of legal experts that I've seen anyway is trying to take the facts of what occurred and actually put them into the real penal code to see what crime was committed. And I personally believe that's because nobody can figure out what crime was committed here. And so they're hoping to see something coming from this DA that goes, oh, OK, well, that's what it was. There, there's no crime here. 
Uh, so, I mean, Christina, this is actually the age-old question here: is like, the or orange man bad is the crime? Um, there, <laughs> yeah. you know, there, you didn't read that part of the Constitution where that's not allowed. <laughs> um, the bigger question here is, you know, f right or wrong, like it or hate it, the president had the legal authority to present the challenges he felt were were genuine. Is there yeah. a, but now they're trying to go after attorneys. They're trying to disbar people. There's liberal activist groups trying to take away your law license. If you even challenge something in court, isn't the court system where you're supposed to challenge things that you disagree with? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a good point. I think conservatives have been, well, a little too conservative on uh, pushing back on their political opposition. And now we have a rogue criminal justice system that believes they can do whatever they want because they haven't been receiving much opposition from conservatives. Imagine the chilling effect that this could potentially have on any future president, that if the president does anything wrong in the course of his actual duties running the country. Remember, this is a conversation between two elected officials. President Trump believes there's a crime you know, committed in the country as far as election fraud goes, and he's asking his